Hello plant lovers, Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel. Do subscribe, I post once a week of my trials and tribulations of growing orchids here in Melbourne in Australia. And this week, my goodness, I nearly missed this and as you can see there's not a lot to show but it's kind of interesting so I thought we would have a look at this today which is Isochilus linearis. Yes, plant lovers, look at that, the most sensational magenta -y pink flower. Anyway, let me show you a bit more of the plant. As you can see, it is quite grass-like in its habit. But there we are, that's the plant. Let me put it back here so you can see the somewhat small and unobtrusive flower. But anyway, this is a species orchid and that means that this is as it occurs in the wild. It hasn't been hybridized. So as such, relatively unusual and sometimes hard to find. But there is an orchid nursery in Australia that specializes in species orchids and that's where I got this one from. Let's get to some basics. Firstly, let me tell you where I am because that does make a difference. So I'm in Melbourne, Australia, which I will show you here. Melbourne is in Southeast Australia and the climate, mm, hard to be exact, but it can be described as either a cool Mediterranean or a warm temperate climate. Essentially, we have cold, wet winters that don't freeze and we can have warm to hot summers that are dry, but that can also be cool and wet. So that can go either way. But our climate is not dissimilar to approximately a zone 10 in the USA and parts of Southeast England that don't get particularly cold winters. So that's where I am. The reason I tell you that is because plant lovers, I grow orchids either indoors or outdoors or not at all with no equipment, no greenhouses or humidifiers, grow rooms, etc., etc. So uh, the orchid just has to find its own place, which means because of my climate, I tend to grow things that are cold, cool and intermediate. Um, and that kind of limits my field. So I've been trying to find interesting things that can grow in my region. And this plant lovers is one of them. So Isochilus linearis is a native of that sort of band of Central America that includes parts of Southern Mexico, parts of the Caribbean, um, but it also apparently grows in parts of Eastern Argentina. So it's got quite a wide range and it is described as both a lithophyte, an epiphyte and terrestrial, which means Isochilus, it's an opportunist. So let's get to the medium then. So generally a good rule of thumb, given that this is an opportunistic orchid is still to keep it fairly light. I have, and I would pot it as you would any other orchid. And in this case, I have used a fairly loose medium, which comprises of majority of bark with a about a 10% ratio of charcoal, of perlite and sphagnum moss in this case as well. Also a little sprinkling of shell grit, which is in fact a chicken food, but it's full of calcium and my secret ingredient, which is mycorrhizal fungi. And that helps develop strong roots and helps the plant's roots extract the nutrients from the soil that it's in, including that shell grit. That's the potting. You've kind of pretty generic because this can in fact adapt to most circumstances. So the next thing is temperature. It is described as a cool to warm growing orchid, which again, like its habitat, covers a multitude of sins. So here in Melbourne, I decided that I was gonna make it cool and it has lived outdoors all year for me, including the winter. Now outdoors for me means it is undercover, so it's not getting rained on, so it doesn't get too wet and I'm able to control the moisture levels, but it is subject to the colder nights of winter, which in Melbourne don't freeze, but it can get to one, two, three degrees, which is 35 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, just slightly above freezing. Occasionally, but that's not common. Generally, our nights are around five to 10 degrees, so around the 50 degree mark Fahrenheit, which is a fairly consistent make or break point for lots of orchids to be able to survive. This one is happily living outdoors all the time. And in terms of its native range as well, it comes from fairly shady, dense-ish forests. So this is an orchid that doesn't want to get tremendously bright in direct light. So as you know, most orchids like bright indirect light to varying degrees with some wanting almost direct sun and others almost deep shade. So this one is much more on the shady end of the spectrum. So I do give it fairly bright indirect light, but I must say it is in one of the shadier spots of my outdoor area. So it gets very dappled light. It gets 
dappled early morning light for maybe about an hour and then diffuse general light, the shadier end of the spectrum. So watering wise, Isochilus linearis doesn't want to dry out. So yes, I just keep it not ringing wet, but I don't let it dry out. Obviously in winter you ease up the watering, but this is an orchid that you don't want the medium to completely dry out. As you can see, it doesn't really have pseudobulbs. It is much more prone to dehydration and drying out than other orchid types. So keep an eye on your watering to make sure it doesn't dry out completely. Now let's have a look at the structure of the plant. It's interesting. It's, um, it looks very grass-like and there is a few species orchids that kind of have not dissimilar habits. So you can see that the flowers occur from the end of these canes, as that one has. At the end of some of these older canes, you can see here this brown remnant of previous flowering. So what I have discovered in my tutelage of this orchid is that these canes, which have flowered, do not look like they're likely to reflower again, which means that you get a flowering opportunity from the end of a new growth, which is not unlike most orchids, that it is the new growth that flowers and then successively that's what happens. So again, as with most orchids, the aim of the game is to promote vegetative growth. Apparently this can flower at any point in the year too. It's not a season specific flower. And obviously the name of the game too is to get as big a specimen as possible so that each tip of each cane has these beautiful cascades of magenta flowers. So you end up with sort of a snow dome of magenta flowers. This example was a division of a bigger plant. And so there are quite a lot of canes that are quite mature and have those dead flower heads at the end. In my ownership of the orchid, it has grown quite a lot of new shoots. This one though was a new growth that was already on the orchid before I got it but clearly hadn't bloomed. So there we go. That's perhaps, and I'm not sure, perhaps what the habit is going to be. New growth takes a year to mature then flowers. Not unlike many orchids like dendrobiums for example. Here is what the new growths look like. So it's a very very fine spike, almost sort of like a miniature bamboo spike in many regards. It does look quite grass-like. This is uh, a new shoot that is a little bit older than this one and it has sent up shoots randomly throughout the year so it doesn't have a particular cycle in terms of it needs a rest in winter etc so as it can flower at any point it can also send up new growths at any point which means again in terms of watering and feeding there isn't a time when you're naturally going to turn that off as with other orchid types again though given my climate in the cooler weather I am just turning down the watering and the fertilizing cycle but not letting it dry out. As to fertilizer then again with all of my orchids in the potting mix when I repot it I put a couple of grains of slow release general fertilizer. I will then top that up once a year and every two to three weeks I give it a diluted solution of a seaweed based general purpose fertilizer and I dilute it to about one eighth of the recommended dose on the bottle. So again, I dial that down a little bit in winter, but I don't stop feeding it because it is an orchid that can grow all year, doesn't have a down season and can flower at any point. So you kind of got to prepare it for that. I was trying to find out a bit more about the name. Now, obviously the Linearis is named after Linnaeus, the father of modern taxonomy. And this orchid was named by a man called Robert Brown, who is a Scottish botanist in 1813. And I know about him because I'm in Australia and Robert Brown came on one of the earliest explorations of Australia as a botanist and is responsible for naming a lot of plants in Australia. So it's a curious coincidence. So I feel that I am but one degree of separation from Robert Brown with, <laughs> with this orchid and all those Australian plants that he named uh, in the very early 19th century. So let's have a look at the flower. As you can see, it is a cluster of blooms at the end of the cane. And there is, I am here to tell you, no fragrance. But if you Google this orchid, you will see mature specimens and it literally is like a halo of magenta. You can imagine what it would look like if all of these spikes had a flower at the end. I've had this for about a year and you know, it's settling into me. It sent up lots of new growth. And I would imagine, if you see all of these shoots here, that must be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's about seven new shoots here which have grown uh, in my care. Now hopefully next year or whenever they decide, they will all flower at the same time, which would be quite wonderful. The other thing I noticed is that this cane 
has died. So as you can see, it has gone quite beigey brown, it's quite dehydrated and all the leaves have died off. So I am going to trim that off because clearly it has nothing left to give um, and there's no point it being there. So it's gonna be an interesting journey to see how often the new shoots come up how often it flowers, ta-da, during a year, whether it only will flower once or randomly, and whether or not, in fact, some of these older canes that have the spent flower heads on the end, whether they are capable of reblooming. I'm not sure, and I couldn't find out anything about it online because it's quite an unusual orchid. So there we are, plant lovers. Thank you for watching, ta-da, my little 101 on Isochilus linearis. It is a relatively unusual species orchid, has the most beautiful color that you can imagine, and it's fairly low maintenance. I simply leave it in a fairly murky corner with a bit of dappled light in the morning. It does its thing. I just make sure it doesn't dry out and that Bob's your uncle, I saw the flower. So there we are. I hope all's well wherever you are, that your orchid growing is going well, and I look forward to seeing you next week with another adventure of some description from my amateur attempts at growing orchids here in Melbourne, which is a cool to cold orchid growing climate. See you next week and thanks for watching.